This is the Furlough Podcast, brought to you by All-American Ford in Oneonta, Alabama. Stop by and see John McAvick and his team today. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Furlough Podcast. It's been a while. I've been off the air for a little bit. A lot of the crazy things have been going on. The world's been falling apart, and we're trying to pick all the pieces back up together. But I'm lucky enough to have Char back on um, my show today, and she is the author of the book Unbreakable Power. Uh, welcome aboard. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So tell us a little bit about your book. I think that um, I think this sounds like a book from I ha- and I'm going to admit to the to the audience I haven't had a chance to read it. I just I just found out about you and 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 got connected with you. Uh, but from from the overview of what I've understand, it's 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 really might hit home to a lot of people with all the things that are going on in the world today. Exactly. So yes. give us a little give us a little insight on on what got you to write this book. Okay. Um, well, I uh, it's hard to know where to start, but I have a <laughs> I've had a very crazy life with a lot of things that have happened and um, have been able to pick up the pieces and you know move on from from each step um, or each misstep whatever you want to say um, I basically was raised in a very abusive uh, home oh, wow. and not, uh, yes I, I from a very young age and not only was was the abuse there was a lot of abuse between my parents but also me being the oldest and i have two younger brothers but i was the oldest and um, got to witness uh, a lot of it uh, m- pretty much all of it my mm. whole life mm. and not only that uh, my mother was a um well she was, I think, just did the best she could, really, with the how she was raised. Mm-hmm. One of those things, you know, where people are um, unprepared when they have children to to know really how to deal with their to do with deal with them, and they use the tactics or the the things that that people use uh, on them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you only know what you know. You know, you exactly. Try to, you, That's you, right. You, even if it's a, an abusive thing, and you think to yourself, "Well, I'll never raise my voice at somebody because it was raised at me," or "I'll never raise a hand to somebody because it was raised at me," and it's exactly. it's so ingrained, and you f- even if you fight it, you, you fight the fact that you know it's it's you it's a it's um it's just something hard to, sh- to shake. You know, they, and you know, I've, I've heard people say that abused, abusive people were typically abused when they were children because it's just beat into them, if you will. I believe that's true. But, um, you know, unshakable power came about because I, I began to have to, at a very, young, very young age, um, learn how to save myself basically mm-hmm. you know um from the abuse and uh being not only victim myself of it but of witnessing it over and over it was it was really terrifying at times um and uh i pretty much endured that till i was you know left and went to college mm. and um i have a degree in psychology and english uh, double degree and then I I got married after my third year in college and my child was born um, a couple years later so I was a very young mother myself and I uh, was divorced from my son's father and raised my son myself his whole life really I was his, his only parent okay. and then at the uh, at a, a after being out of school for about eight years I uh, decided I wanted to go be a lawyer 
Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> I <don't>, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, I needed to wait until my son was old enough. So it was about eight years, eight mm -hmm. or nine years. And um, so being a single mom, going to law school when you're 32 years old and everybody else is 24, still living at home with mom and dad. Yeah. It was, it was a little bit, it was a little bit, a lot rough. It was pretty rough. Oh, yeah. uh, studying all the time and trying to make sure that he was taken care of and had everything he needed. And of course, in law school, they won't, they won't allow you to work the first couple of years, at least. Um, and I only was able to start working in my third year uh, doing work for other lawyers and research and things like that, writing. Now, when you say they won't let you work, like any kind of job or legal job? Any no kind, kind of job. job. Mm -mm. Wow. Because it's that demanding. Wow. It's just so demanding. Um, so you get a, you know, $60,000 at least education and you, uh, you leave with that and, and you go out in the world and try to make it. Well, I did get a, a good opportunity after I studied for three months to pass the bar exam and I, I passed the first time. Thank goodness. <laughs> oh, that's impressive, right? I mean, it, that's a tough exam. It is a tough exam and some of my best friends in school did not pass the first time. That was, that was, that was really hard right. is to pass myself and not be able to really fully enjoy that because of, you know, my friends sure. didn't pass it. And then sure. they were extremely upset. I mean, it was, but anyway, so moving on, I uh, worked for um, a great law firm. They taught me a lot for about five years. And then I said, you know, I'm making these people a whole lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm a seasoned lawyer now, and I think I can, if they can do it, I can do it. Oh, sure. That's kind, of, that's kind of been my thing my whole life. If somebody else can do it, I can do it too. So uh, I started my own law firm with, I think I had, four cases or five cases that insisted come with me from the other law firm. They were trying to keep me from having cases, you know, having any mm. cases to start with. So I started with really nothing. And um, my legal assistant was, went with me and um, she was at that law firm too. So she, she came with me and we did, well, very well, pretty fast. I, I, looking back, I really don't, I really don't know how it, it happened, but it just rolled, you know, it just, mm -hmm. it just flowed and, and we did well. And I guess at the height of my career, I was voted best lawyer in um, my state. And that same month, I was diagnosed the first time with breast cancer. Oh man. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a tough thing to swallow, right? Well, yeah, because I, I, I was the only lawyer and I had a staff of 10 just for me wow. and helping me. So basically, you know, I was cracking a $40,000 a month nut with me being the only attorney. Wow. That's, yeah. a, that's tough. That's tough living right there. Well, that's when tough. When you got that and many people depending on you. Exactly. And I, you know, I have a lot of empathic uh, abilities or sensitivities, I, I should say. And the, the business of law is taking care of a lot of people, not only your employees, but you know, 350 new cases a year. Mm -hmm. And so what I ended up doing was empathically taking on everybody else's stuff, right? you know, taking it on my body. And, um, and it literally made me sick. It, yeah. it really it literally made me sick. You know, I've heard somebody say that before too, you know, cancer is a, is a strange disease and they say that your body, and I might be talking, talking out my ass, you know, I don't know. I've never, I've never 
I've never had cancer, <laughs> but you know, I've heard people say that that stress and anxieties and just getting bombarded constantly with all these woes, if you will, can exactly. make your body do some weird things, you know? And, exactly. And that's what happened. That's exactly I, what happened. You nailed it. That's and uh, yeah, it, it, it happened. And um, so to make that long story short, I'll just say that I had three other diagnoses and did <sighs> surgeries and radiation and, you know, all kinds of treatments to uh, <laughs> thinking that I would be able to uh, beat the beast and mm -hmm. it would stop coming back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it didn't, it just now, kept coming. So. And it kept coming back in, in, it was all breast cancer, right? All breast cancer, okay. all in the very same breast. Really? It's yes. like, do you, do you feel like they just didn't get it out every time? Did they, now did they do surgery or was it just radiation? Both. Oh, wow. Wow. Both. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So, um, after the fourth diagnosis, cause I was trying to do, you know, the conservative, uh, route and, um, my doctor said, Char, you, you've got to have surgery. You, you, we got to do we got to do a mastectomy. And uh, so even though the cancer was always on one side, I wasn't going to take a chance and go through that all again on the other side. So oh, absolutely. I, yeah. So I went ahead and, and did it. And that, you know, all of that sequence of events right there um, and probably some of the law school stress and being a single mom and all that, it, all that, you know, the, the compilation of all of that, um, it, that's what made me sick and, mm -hmm. you know, everything. Just taking on too much. Exactly. And see, I don't, I don't, I'm one of those people, I, you know, this unshakable power is, it's, I, I don't know when to stop. I, I don't know how to stop. Mm -hmm. I, I just keep going no matter what. I mean, yeah, I now, you, now you're an author. I mean, I mean, you just keep adding right. on, don't you? <laughs> well, it didn't just happen overnight. You know, right. I, had a, I had a pretty bad, I mean, you know, pretty extreme situation trying to come back because not only did it, um, it affected me financially to the point where, uh, you know, I didn't know if I was going to be able to recover from that. Mm -hmm. And um, also I had married, um, I had remarried and I, we ended up getting divorced because I was a wreck. I was a wreck. I, I'm, I'm losing my overnight, pretty much. I'm losing my career and my business. I owned my own office buildings. They were gone. A house that we had just remodeled, just finished remodeling, mm -hmm. um, we lost the house. Oh, we wow. lost. I mean, I lost everything pretty much, but my life. Mm. And so when, when that happens to you, you really take a step back and say, why, why first it's why me, you know, why, sure, why, why sure. That's natural. for me, you know, That's natural. Yeah, sure. Sure. And then you start to look deeper within yourself and say, you know, I was questioning, well, I, I lost my identity. I had no idea. I was lawyer Shar. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, pretty well known. And all of a sudden, I don't know who I am anymore. Yeah. Okay. So I started on a path to recreate myself. Mm-hmm. Well, that's going to lead up to my question is, is, did you, did you think about, okay, what's truly important now versus what you may have thought was important before, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's like, you kind of look around and go, you know, sometimes I, I was having a discussion with a, a, a guy the other day and we were talking about houses, for example, you mentioned remodeling houses and it's like, you know, some people just like, I worked so hard for this house and then I die you know, and then, you know, so you, oh. so you have to go back and go, is what you're doing 
really important and does it make a difference to you in the long run and for some people it does everybody has a different perspective right you know it's like some people are artists and and they you know they're going to create no matter what some people love the law you know and and being in and whether they're a trial lawyer or a insurance lawyer whatever their discipline is or or a doctor you know there's some people um my mother used to work for a doctor that she would have to remind him to eat and, you know, because he would work so hard and he would just, he, and she'd make that comment. I'm thinking, how would a doctor not remember to eat? But it was like, as soon as he walked through the door until he left, he was nonstop. So, so you just have yep. to reevaluate what it means to you. Right. That's exactly right. Chris, I, the things that were important before were no longer important. It wasn't important about the owning the office buildings or even the house that doubled in size, you know, and mm -hmm. the cars in the garage or anything about that. It was about what, what, it, what do I really want? Mm -hmm. Who am I really? Because I don't believe we are what we do. We're not what we do. Exactly. We are, yes, we are much more than that. And we are, we, that, that's not our defining statement is not, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm a this or I'm a that. I'm an author, but I'm, I'm much more than that. I am sure. a, you know, so there's a, something that really helped me get through all that. Uh, was realizing that I had a purpose in life, mm -hmm. that I was literally saved uh, for a reason, much more important than practicing law mm -hmm. and much bigger. And I wanted, always my passion has been, even that's why I went to law school, the reason is to help people, right? Maybe for some, not for all. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it was to help people. Okay. And, um, and I ended up helping people, a lot of people, but harming myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yes, definitely my, my values changed and my focus changed. And I had to dig really deep to figure out who I really was mm -hmm. or who I really am. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, way. yeah, I mean, did did it make you think about who you wanted to be? As far as you know, you you've accomplished these obviously great milestones for many, comparatively to many people. As far as being a single mother, going, getting finished through college, getting through law school, and doing all these things, did you? And and obviously, by the time that these illnesses happen, your son has grown older and older, and all that good stuff, and. And, and I'm, I'm going to make the assumption that he is a grown man now or a young yes. man. And so, um, so now that you, you kind of got him handled and you're past the, 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 the cancer, the disease, do you, do you sit back and think, okay, where do I want to go now? As far as what I want to be, what I want to see myself as, as far as, is it just being an author? Are you still practicing law or, or, you know, no, no, I, 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 I could not practice law anymore because as you said, the stress of it all was, would have killed me if yeah. I would have continued to practice law. And my doctors told me that. Um, so no, I had, to, that's why I had to give up everything. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so what do you, where do you, where do you want to be now as far as what, what is, what is Char's, you know, besides being a good author, I mean, obviously you've got a, a book out and, and we want to see that successful. And where can everybody get that, by the way, before I forget that little tidbit. Okay. Um, Unshackable Power. You can see it. Uh huh. Is, uh, it's available at Barnes and Noble and on Amazon. Okay. And Excellent. online. And it's, uh, this is the hard copy that I just showed you. And then mm -hmm. there's a paperback. And we are, we are um, launching the ebook. Oh, nice! On Tuesday of the next week, on Tuesday, anybody watching this show, anybody mm -hmm. know me or don't know me, 
you can get a free copy of the ebook. Wow. For that That's, whole day. Oh, for, for that, that whole day. day. Okay. Yeah. Man, everybody That's needs to jump on this. Yeah, everybody it's, needs to jump on that. So it's my way of giving them back. Yeah. So what do you, give me a little insight on your book. What is what do you feel like the book is would do for somebody like myself? What would I get out of it? And what did you get out of it writing it? Oh boy. Well <laughs> big questions, right? No, no, they're great questions. Thank you for asking. Um the book is what it is, it's a it's a teaching memoir. Okay. Really? Um, so that it, it incorporates parts of my life, the things that I've been through, what I learned along the way and how I transitioned from one thing to the next and without completely, I mean, I, I did go through a, a dark depression and a time of a lot of anxiety because I had no idea what I was going to do or if you told me that you didn't, I'd, I'd call you a liar because that's yeah. a lot to deal with. Holy smokes. Yeah. So I've been through all that too, you know, and, yeah. uh, and made it through it and to be here right now in front of you and your audience, um, with my book, I actually have published three books this oh, past wow. year. Oh, <laughs> wow. Three. Holy smokes. Sounds like you're not a quitter. See, I <laughs> told you. <laughs> so I three it. books holy smokes and i don't eat <laughs> oh no goodness well i mean I, that's why i was shaking my head when you're telling me about your dad i was like oh yeah i know that's my story i, yeah. I don't have time I, like even today i have not eaten oh my because goodness. i have been doing you know one thing after the other yeah. and uh anyway and i have another show this afternoon so um i'm just i don't i don't quit i don't quit but and so that's where the unshakable power comes in, right. but it also comes in in a deeper way because when you go through those, those life changing things, like a lot of people are going through now just with the virus and uh, <clears throat> with the unrest social and situation and unrest. Yes. yes. And they're losing their jobs. They don't know if they're getting them back. The company the companies are going bankrupt. It's, it's just so scary to, think that one day you have it at all and the next day you you have nothing and you don't know who you are why you're yeah. here where you're going or you know what do you do mm -hmm. so that's what my book is about is about re recovering from one thing at a time and just taking one thing at a time but you have to dig inside to find the that inner power Absolutely. that unshakable power to hang in there and to not give up and to not quit and just take that time as a ref time to reflect. It's a time of reflection, even though it's scary as hell. Yeah. You can, yeah. Um, but it's a great time just to go inside and figure out, like really get in touch with yourself as far as who am I? Who am I really? Am I that car mechanic or am I that plumber really that, that you know, lost my career or whatever? I, it could be anything mm -hmm. it happens to everybody. It can happen to anybody. And it's so funny because, and I say funny, funny, like in almost like a weird kind of way is, is, you know, when, 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 when you're a kid and you're growing up and you look to adults and so you think, man, they got, they got the answers, right. You know, you just, cause you just make that assumption. And then as you begin to become an adult, there's so yeah. many things that you like, you start questioning, you know, like, man, the, you know, you didn't realize that the adults around you as good as they did for you or made, you know, hopefully did for you around you that you looked up to that, you know, they were still figuring it out too. And I think people, exactly we're always going to be trying to figure it out. And, and, and I think that if we don't admit that to ourselves, we're lying to ourselves, you know, because you know, everything I do every day, I'm trying to figure it out. You know, I'm trying to make this right decision or that right. Sure. Is it the right decision? So I, I think right. that, uh, from what it sounds like your book's about is, you know, okay, you make a misstep, you know, you, know, you just, you have to kind of move to the side and, and go down a little bit different path. That's exactly right. You just have to shift, shift around and transform and, and recreate and, 
be the alchemist that we all are, Yeah, you know, and just. Now, would you yeah. say that in, 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 and I'm going to do my interpretation. So you agree or disagree on this, on this, okay. on this interpretation is it sound, you know, and I try to tell this to people is, and you'd made the comment, you know, figuring out who you are, right. Just because you're a lawyer at one point, a successful lawyer, just because you're not that lawyer anymore doesn't make you any less or even any more than, than what you were. You know, I think people get so wrapped up in, in what they want people really want other people to believe they are versus what they're worried about being inside. You know, am I a great, am I a great musician? Am I a great lawyer? Am I a great doctor? Am I a great whatever? And and then they take it away. And that's when you see people go in that great, deep depression like you said that you went through and you have yeah. to get through that dark time and uh and i think we need to get away from titles a lot of times you know when we deal with people on a exactly. personal basis and it's so that's many right. so many people i've heard get introduced you know hey it's my buddy he's a he's a policeman you know okay well that's great or she's a nurse oh okay wonderful but you know we throw those titles all the time and exactly and during a lot of this um uh, pandemic stuff and you know yeah. this you know, they're talking about essential workers. Well, you know, we're all essential to somebody, somehow, some way. Right. And, right. and so I'm, I'm a big, I just don't like titles that much. And so I, I'd always try to get people to like yourself, you know, okay, you're this today. You can be that tomorrow. You know, there's no, exactly. there's no time frame. That's exactly right. And, and really it, it was, it was a blessing for me. It was, mm-hmm. it was total. Uh, I was blessed with breast cancer. And because, because I was blessed to be saved, literally my life saved four times, I, I can bless others now. That's the gift in it. And I think that's what people, that's a big thing is, is, is figure out what's the gift in this. Everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And if you just go kill yourself, jump off a cliff or whatever and give up, you, you could have missed out on the very best opportunity that you were being offered by mm-hmm. losing that job. And you could have, you could have lived your passion, your real dreams, your real, the real you. Mm-hmm. And it's all in, in there. You just have to find it. You know, you have to dig deep enough to find it. Yeah. And I use that all the time. Sometimes you got to yeah. fall down to find that $20 bill on the ground. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, and it's you not about, know. you know, yeah. You're like, yes. oh, look at that. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, exactly. yeah, you know, I've, I have lost a couple of jobs where I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do now? And then I end up with a much better job. And I'm like, oh my God, that was, I got so lucky. You know? Right. Or meant to be, so, you know, how, however so, you want to look at it. That's right. That's right. You know, that, that old cliche, when one door closes, another one opens. Absolutely. I, I beat on a friend of mine all the time. I'm, I'm a cup half full kind of guy. So I, and a, a friend of mine is a cup half empty kind of guy. And we play these little, you know, back and forth thing. I, tr- I try to turn him into a cup half full, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you never yeah. know. right? Yeah, so. exactly. You just never know. Mm-hmm. But it, it's been, um, it's been quite a journey. And I'm happy as can be. Um, um, just, I love to write. But what it did for me, you asked that question in the beginning, and I really didn't answer it. Um, it, it was very healing for me to tell my own story and f- hear it, feel it again. It was, some of it was really hard for me to get out on, you know, how to type it would make me cry mm. because I'd be like, this, this hurts too bad to even write it. Right. And then once I wrote it and got it out of me, it really helped. It helped me a lot. And, and, and I just wanted to help other people, you know, that that's really it, but it did help me. It did mm. help me, help me a lot to see my life and look at it in a different perspective as far as, the things that you were talking about a minute ago, what's really valuable. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like when you, when you got the words down on paper, you could back up and look at it from a distance, you know, like that, like your whole life, you know, you like, you, you, you know, oh, yes. 
when it swims around in your head and I'm no writer, I'm going to go ahead and just let everybody know that I'm lucky to write a few sentences, you know, but you know, especially writing a book or a whatever, but I, I always envision that, you know, sometimes when we get swimming things in our head, you know, our own movie, if you will, that plays in our head, once you get it on paper and you can kind of back up and then reread it, you know, just, does it, does it feel like you're looking through somebody else's eyes? That's a really good question. Um, no, because not, not really. I mean, it's, it's sort of even, it is in a way just sort of like unbelievable for me. You mm -hmm. know, when I, when I step back and just look at the big picture, I do. Uh, it's just kind of like I shake my head and it's like, wow. But it's, um, it's real and, and, I'm, and I feel it. I can yeah. still feel it. I can still feel the things that I wrote. And that's what makes, that's another thing that makes the book good. It's a real, it's not a, it's not a big thick book. It's, yeah. but it like one of my best friends said yesterday, she said, Char, that book is a powerful book. Okay. It may be a little, you know, it may not be that big, but she said, you pack a lot in there. <laughs> well, sometimes and, you don't uh, have to drag it on out to, to tell a story. Exactly. It's not about, it's really not even about my story. Mm -hmm. It is, a, it is about me, but it's for you. Gotcha. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's written to help you get through and to take the next step and to say, okay, I got to do whatever I need to do to, to when I'm on the ground, I, I need to do whatever I need to grab hold of something <clears throat> and pull myself back up. I have got to get back up and get to, you know, go again, go mm -hmm. inside and spend time with yourself, figure out what you, what your dreams are, what your passions, what you're passionate about, what keeps that fire lit inside of you, right. you know, the one thing and I did, go for that. one thing I did closest to what you did as far as any kind of writing is I was going through a bad period one time and, 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 you know, you do the whole, you mentioned it earlier when you start going into those dark places and you start thinking about what have you done or what's it all about or whatever. I wrote down a list of accomplishments one time and I was like, okay, I'm going to start far back as I can remember things I've felt like were accomplishments and I'm going to write them down. And I was pretty surprised at how long that list was. There I you was go. Like, I was like, man, I've done some things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so what that does for you, it makes you believe in yourself more, mm -hmm. you know, and that's another thing that book talks about is, is getting in touch with yourself and looking back on your life. That's a really good point. And when you do look back, it's like, okay, wow, I did all that. That's yeah, I think we pretty... forget, don't we? We get so blinded, you know, focused on the narrow thing in front of us that we don't, we don't look around. Exactly. Exactly. We don't look, we don't look around and we, we don't look inside mm -hmm. and that's where the answers are. That is where the answers that you, everyone is searching for. They're not exterior to ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know, they're inside. And that's yeah. where you have to go and you have to stay there till you figure it out. Well, what are your, what, what are, you know, we got the book that's out. Um, you got three books. What are your other books name, by the way? So we can. <laughs> oh, I have, um, I have another book that's called, um, well, I have it here, right here. It's a, it's a book that it's a, it was a co-author to the other two are co-author. One is power up super women. Oh, okay. Excellent. And the other one is a revival, um, women embracing their superpowers. It's, okay. Those are both written for women. This uncheckable power is for, I wanted it to not be exclusive to women. Women. You want it for um, everybody. Right. Okay. And, um, but you know, so those are the other two. That's excellent. And, Where's your neck? What are you going down the road with? What's, I mean, we got this book coming out. Do you have any other future projects you're thinking about doing? Oh, yes. 
<laughs> I don't know if I should have asked that question after we uh, exactly. got through talking about how, how much you, you really going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a lot going on. I'm, I'm a speaker and okay. I, I'm a, also a poet oh, and okay. um, a, a kind of an artist and I love photography. I have, um, I have plans to start another business with a good friend, mm -hmm. not, a, not by myself again. Um, of course, Believe Inspire is my business now. Okay. It's, it's about believing and inspiring in, okay. in people. You know, I'm, I'm about giving hope and inspiration to people. Um, so I'm, um, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm doing these podcasts, I'm doing online events, classes, um, summits with other people. Um, you name it, I'm doing it. Okay. God, well, it sounds, well, don't wear yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually energizing. It's, energizing. It's, it's not stressful at all. Excellent. I really love it. Excellent. Well, I know that I look, I'm going to, I'm going to check that out, that book. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I love positive things. I, I try to, sub, as many negative things are in the world, I, I try my best to surround myself with as much positivity as I can, because, you know, getting pulled into those dark places seems like it's a lot easier sometimes than is pulled into the light. So uh, exactly. I'm definitely going to check that out. Anything that can make me feel better, motivated, I'm, I'm interested in. And, yeah. and I want to make sure that everybody um, goes and checks out your book next Tuesday. This show will be out before then uh, Tuesday. What's the date on that? Uh, 16th the 16th so everybody needs to go and check that out if you're an ebook person if you like to do it that way but i highly recommend that you go and get the hard book because having the hard book i feel having it sitting there where you can see it don't put it away have it sitting there so that when you have those days even if you don't read the whole book open the book up and 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 find a section just read a section and and you'd be shocked at what just reading a little something positive will do for you. And to me, I wish books would get, and I know everybody wants to go to eBooks and I think that's great, but something about having that hard copy, you know, something about putting your hands on it, you know, just really, I think hits home in my opinion. So I hope that everybody checks it out and, 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 and buys your book. I mean, got, thank you go we got bookstores everywhere we can go we Thanks, can go, get, go pick that up yeah barnes and noble online and amazon and the ebook of course is amazon okay and they, yeah. everybody goes to amazon y'all can get it in two yeah. days even if you don't like to drive or if you don't want to go deal with public amazon will have it to you you probably in two days <laughs> i know right yeah exactly. well char i've really enjoyed having you on and Thank I, didn't, you. I, I didn't want to get too deep in your books. I don't want to give your book away. I want people to go and buy it. And I, and I encourage everybody to go pick this copy up because we, we, we need positivity right now. I think, uh, I think you're right. And it, it was meant to all meant to be and timed perfectly. And it, it wasn't something I did. I, I didn't, figure all that I mean I didn't I did not know we were going to have a pandemic or <laughs> you know I, so everything again happens for a reason and be blessed and bless others just see the blessing in things and then just try to get that inner strength and get hold of it and stand back up and say you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna do something different and I'm gonna just do whatever you want to do just do what you what really makes you happy Absolutely. All right. Well, again, thank you for being on the show. If you'll hang on for me just a little bit, let me hit my bed music. Everybody make Thanks sure for that having me. we enjoyed it greatly. Everybody make sure that you go like subscribe to all our social medias. Um, listen to the podcast. Uh, you can get this on iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, stitcher i can name them all we've got it. so if you can if you want to go and listen to these shows or or spread them to your friends who listen on different podcasts or different outlets let them know uh again char thank you for being on and we'll talk oh, to you thank soon. you chris